Welcome back to our IDC 31 tournament series. We're on round five and we're playing against Xboom in just a couple minutes, who is almost definitely going to be playing a very aggressive deck. He plays a ton of Fire Nature Rush in this circuit. Uh, and if he's not playing that, he's probably playing some sort of Water Fire Nature Tempo, so we might have a mirror match on our hands, but I would bet that it would be Fire Nature Rush. As mentioned earlier on in the series, I think this deck that we have is pretty capable of racing, but Fire Nature Rush is one of those frustrating decks to play against for basically, even if you don't make mistakes, as long as you potentially miss your curve slightly or don't have enough shield triggers, you could still just lose. So we're just going to focus on playing good Duel Masters, minimizing mistakes to hopefully zero, and uh, hopefully we draw the curve and we get a shield trigger or two to help us out. Let's jump in and see how it goes. And as a reminder to recap, the run so far, we are 4-0, 8-1 in games, so yeah, winning this would definitely lock us into top 8, and even if we don't win, we should hopefully be okay. I mean, especially if we win our last round, we'll be locked again, but uh, yeah, let's hope for a win, despite the potentially not amazing matchup that we are kind of teched for, though, a little bit. Ooh, we got a 17. That's exactly what we needed. The hard parts, hard parts over, he got a 13. Yeah, 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 there we go. Look at that. Let me shuffle some more. Ooh, look at this hand. You make sure OBS is looking good and everything. Okay, there we go. Okay, so in the interest of definitely playing a two drop next turn, unfortunately, it looks like Gaunt is going to have to go down. Our hand is just like pretty poised here. This is kind of sick. But do we uh, want to consider if we, yeah, 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 I mean, we could Copper Locust down, then maybe like play Gaunta instead of Quixotic, but then we might not have a three, so, but then we maybe Gate instead of that. Now let's just go for Quixotic Locust. I think it's better. Want to look at all options, though. Don't want to miss anything obvious in a match that could lock us into top eight. Sniper Mosquito. We'll see if he has the Shroom to back it up. Lucky Ball's probably not where I want to be in this match, I don't think. Um, yeah, we'll definitely Quixotic here. And as I thought, X-Boom is playing at least a couple copies of Torcon, which is going to be really good in this matchup for him, probably. I wonder how many there are total. What if he's doing something weird like a four of? Four Torcons and Fire Nature Rush is uh, certainly an interesting metagame choice. It's like the stained glass of Fire Nature Rush. But I feel like there's at least two in those uh, widely considered to be flex spots. Yeah, Copper Locust is very safe in this matchup, and one of the reasons I included it was because it trades over Garnta, and generally is okay against Control too, because it dodges all the fire removal, including even Blizzard of Spears. And against Fire Nature Rush, there are no evolution creatures. At least there really shouldn't be. It was definitely more of a liability against Claude Alpha and the Water Dark aggro, but in this matchup it should be pretty strong. Now, if X-Boom doesn't have Poisonous Mushroom, I think we're in a very good spot. Then the question becomes, do we attack next turn? Speed attacker down. Ooh, okay, this is a strong turn. Unicorn Fish. It's no Aqua Surfer in shields, but it's certainly not bad. Gorilla's quite slow. I mean, obviously we'll put something down this turn, play Copper Locust, and I think trade over the Sniper Mosquito, gearing up for Unicorn Fish next turn. Um, I think I will put Kirill down. I think I will get some more creatures to play alongside the Spiral Gates, and I think that'll be better uh, for maintaining tempo, probably. It also allows us the flexibility of a double Spiral Gate turn, which maybe we don't have to take, but could be relevant. But I'm hoping Copper, Locust, and Fish are our next two turns. We're lucky here. This could just be a one card from hand turn from X Boom. Hopefully, that card isn't Firefighter Magnus. Okay.
We like to see Searing Wave. Stained Glass is quite late, but would have been good instead of Copper Locust. Okay, we're taking a lot of hits, obviously. There really isn't a ton to think about here. Our opponent put Poisonous Mushroom down in mana, which doesn't really telegraph anything, right? Like, it could be a speed attacker that he's holding. That would be the best thing for him to have. We just have to hope it's not, but, like, Poisonous Mushroom is kind of weak at this stage of the game with uh, the Sniper Mosquito already gone, so we really have no way of knowing. But we have no counterplay to Pyrofighter. Like, if it's Pyrofighter, we die over two turns. There's nothing we can really do about that. Um... It's basically either Spiral Gate, Quixotic, or Unicorn Fish. If it's like double two drop next turn, it makes more sense to just play Unicorn Fish. Maybe we double Spiral Gate next turn instead of Wave if we don't need to, like if we're dealing with Gauntas and stuff. We're definitely full clearing here. I think it's just Fish Bounce Mushroom. Um, we can put Glass down because it's too expensive. Unless there's ever a reason we need to put Quixotic down. Can't see it. Poisonous Mushroom and card that he just drew and the card that he was holding. Firefighter will kill me over two turns and there's really nothing I can do about it because I can't, uh, can't win the game next turn. I don't have any blockers in my deck. Um, Rick and Boo the Dismantler would he made me very scared, but if he's got that and two other regular creatures, he probably plays a regular creature first and tries to set up a one turn if he doesn't have Pyrofighter. Pyrofighter is just like the obvious choice, right? So if it's Pyrofighter, we see it. Next boom is good and knows that my deck will almost definitely have zero counterplay. These are the really <laughs> scary moments. All right, puts the speed attacker down and plays double two. Doesn't anticipate the double Spiral Gate Inquisition. But how could you? How could you anticipate that? He's worried about Searing Wave, but knows Ganta survives it. Doesn't think I have double bounce ready to go. I wish this Quixotic was an Essence Elf so I could play it and the double gate. On the bright side, we can Mana Rebirth because we don't need it. We don't need the extra mana this turn. Uh, the question then becomes how much to break. Obviously we see a Torque on, we stop. Besides that, I think we just continue on. No, we don't really need to. We can like, all right, we, we definitely try to break two shields here. We double bounce, we break two shields because that allows Jigalzor to have maximum chance to double break and that's all we need next turn. So we mana rebirth, double bounce, uh, go in with the two larger creatures. Um, don't If we see a Torque on first shield, we stop and fray. <laughs> <laughs> and if we don't, we just break the two. All right, we don't break the third. No real reason to. Um, yeah, X-Boom has no way to kill me this turn. Not enough mana to play double Pyrofighter or double speed attacker. And we don't even necessarily lose to first shield Jigalzor, unless it's accompanied by also third, I mean, first shield Volcanic Arrows on Jigalzor because unless it's accompanied by third shield, final shield Volcanic Arrows, um, our three attackers already in play will be able to win us the game. So we're highly, highly likely to win here, which is great. Great news, everybody. Unless I'm not accounting for something. And Jigalzor, one of the main reasons I like it is because of its ability to push these race situations over the top. Like we are about to do. All right, game one is ours. So even if we lose, we uh, got... <laughs> We lost one to two, <laughs> but hey, we, we can maybe pick up one of these next two, I believe. It's a tricky matchup, but things are going well so far. And look at that hand again. Um, Which one drop is it this time? Another Sniper Mosquito, okay. I mean, look, the hand is good, but we are on the draw. Okay, Ganta is an option this game, but really like, 
Bombat's quite good. I don't necessarily love the idea of manaing it. It could be the card that helps us clear an extra creature, break an extra shield. Um, Ganta versus Quixotic on board, it's like... Yeah. I think I mana the Ganta again. I'm really hoping I don't have to mana Spiral Gate so we can go like Glass into turn four. Maybe Bronze Arm Gate. Oh, that's kind of kind of scary though, because what if we brick on the mana, right? I'm going to say Bombat could be good and charge this. Turn one, Gonta and mana both games is a little odd. Does he have Shroom again? King of Poisonous Mushroom. Oh, this curve is just nasty. I think we're going to need help from the shields to win this one. I mean, that's nice, right? But being on the draw and already taking hits, uh, it's not looking like we will have a ton of time to play it unless we get... We, we just need Aqua Surfer next turn, basically, in the shields. Um, we have multiple options, uh, multiple opportunities to get it. I guess we can keep our red cards. We're never really needing to play two Bronze Arms this game. Simple turn. As we get beaten down. Okay. X Boom has efficiently played all of the cards in his hand. Aqua Surfer? Any uh, any Aqua Surfers down there? For your boy? Uh oh. <laughs> yeah, this is um, this is classic Fire Nature Rush right here. Stained Glass on the draw, man. I don't know if I actually showed Stained Glass last game, like in Mana. I don't. I think I kept it in my hand. Maybe I, I could just be wrong there. I'm not going to mana at this game just so he doesn't know it's potentially coming. Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously we're just dead on board, right? We can... Okay, we're not we're not dead on board. The only thing that maybe keeps us alive is playing Spiral Gate from hand this turn, trading oh, trading even with a, uh, a Poisonous Mushroom, which is crazy. It's just horrible, horrible turn. Um, and then getting Aqua Surfer and Shields. But I mean, like, yeah, we can't Bronze Arm and hope for Wave next turn because we trade and then there's three attackers and only one shield that could be a Surfer. So yeah, things are things are ab absolutely terrible for us here. We can't even bronze arm into Spiral Gate, which I would attempt if we could. Um, bounce the sniper, I guess. So we can't just get speed attacker for next turn. Trade with that one. And uh, yeah, Aqua Surfer would be pretty cool. Yeah, Bouncing Sniper means he draws another 1-drop, he could just play two 1-drops here, and then I'm, like, still still pretty dead. Volcanic Arrow's down, that's good for me, I guess. Aqua Surfer, please. He could just, um... Well, he can't not attack here because he has Deadly Fighter. So, I mean, if it's Aqua Surfer, that's nice. Eh? No, okay. Absolutely destroyed game two on the draw, which I think illustrates why I was so happy to win the die roll. Okay, this hand is more balanced. It's not like, it doesn't have a bunch of tricks, but it's generally strong. Um, yeah, Quixotic Bronze Arm Kirill is maybe good. Maybe good enough. I mean, it's obviously not bad. We got the mana fix, turn one. Let's see if we draw any other options or if we're just playing straightforward mid-rangey Duel Masters here. Okay, of the of the one drops, that is the least scary, I think. Essence Elf is kind of an interesting card here. I have some beef with it in this hand because we don't have the Volcano Charger follow-up, so there's really no compelling reason to rush it out. I also don't really have the time to play it next turn because I'm gonna definitely want a Bronze Arm Tribe to set up either Kirill or maybe like a Searing Wave Draw or something like that or like even soul swap out Jigels, or I don't know. Um, if Ganta comes down next turn, then I bronze arm, then Ganta attacks, I have nothing to trade with the Ganta. So I need to actually play Quixotic now to preemptively deal with any of the the normal non torcon two drops. Or even if it is Torcon next turn, I have something that trades favorably and that's super important. And given the rest of the hand, I think I have to just actually put this down.
my opponents probably don't love that I'm taking so long explaining my mana choices, but I am trying to illustrate the things that I tend to think about. Sniper and a one is interesting. It's going in. And is capping in two other things. Kirill in some cases is actually better than Fish even in this matchup, just because it it makes me know that my opponent's not gonna draw a speed attacker the following turn, which is pretty valuable intel. With the soul swap, there's a thought to putting Jigalzor down, right? There's also a thought to breaking here and making my opponent either not have a play or like, yeah, I think I think breaking is probably correct. I'm gonna do some math for my like six mana, if I have five mana then I can, okay. Um, Yeah, let's put this down and lean on soul swap to get it out later. Work on there would have been very, very, very bad. But we have to, we can't just play passively in this match. We have to apply some sort of pressure. Searing Wave would have been an amazing draw. Obviously, I'm not thrilled that that went down in mana. Um, unless there's just another one also on the top of the deck to deal with the likely two creatures my opponent is about to play here. One of them might be a Gonta at this point, though. Gonta Cap'n. And just continues to bash my face in. Quixotic's at 7k, there is no trading. <laughs> is he getting back? Another Quixotic? Okay. We could really use Aqua Surfer. Spiral Gate is also quite good. Okay, I'm doing some quick math. If we put Fish down and Coril, we bounce Sniper. We can trade over Deadly Fighter with the Quixotic. He can't kill me next turn unless it's a Torcon shield. We break one. He's down to three shields. We have three attackers. He could attack over one, giving me two attackers. But next turn, I can always swap out Jigalzor and potentially win the game that way. I think that's just the best. I think it is, yeah, better than like play two creature. Well, is two creatures double trade just better? If I do that, then I still have two creatures next turn. Then I'll be at five mana, six mana. I can put a fi I can put fish down. Well, I put a I put Kirill down. Go to five. Then I go to six. Then I'm at seven next turn. And I can unicorn fish and swap. Maybe that's safer because it dodges Torcon. So put this down. Play these two. One issue with this is if I multi brick next turn, I might not be okay. Party Cap'n's not a threat on Quixotic because in order to really threaten me, X-Boom absolutely has to play creatures here. But actually, no, we should be fine even if we multi-brick then, right? Because I just swap first into Jigalzor, play fish, then unless I hit Volcanic Arrows, Jigalzor also makes the fish the speed attacker that it would need to be, I think. I think I'm doing this right. Maybe X-Boom won't think I'm necessarily setting up a lethal for next turn and maybe just thinks I didn't curl because I don't have other water mana. It's like if I couldn't threaten to kill him next turn, this was a worse play than just uh, full clearing and obviously bouncing the non-speed attacker card. Although X-Boom already has like five cards in hand, so if one of them isn't a speed attacker, I don't even... I don't even know what's going on. Volcanic Arrows? And a trade? <laughs> That's super interesting. Wow, that's really interesting. I'm part... So, like, there's fish, there's break, but then I'm not really doing anything else this turn, and then Jigalzor doesn't double break, which is like, you know, we're giving our opponent an extra shot at Torgon or whatever. I am tempted to go Soul Swap out Bronze Arm, Soul Swap in Jigalzor, 
and just play Unicorn Fish. And then next turn, we have two untapped creatures he has nothing to kill me with, unless he does like another Volcanic Arrows from hand, which is A, unlikely because we've already seen two. Um, then I just play Stained Glass and hopefully, if I want even more redundancy, like whatever creature I top deck alongside it, um, and then I'll have Unicorn Fish to break a shield, Jigalzor to break two, Stained Glass will get Speed Attacker and win the game. I don't know if there's like a strictly better way to do this. Soul Swap's got to be used on Jigalzor at some point, I think, if I want to win this game, so it might as well just be now when I'm not really feeling pressure and I just don't break. Well, now X-Boom knows I'm trying to set up lethal. But like, what's the what's the line that he can take to really stop me? It's like Volcanic Arrows will blow up another shield and blow up Jigalzor from him, but then he has two mana. Maybe he won't even be able to play two one drops. And if he only plays one creature alongside of that, I'm not very scared at all. Yeah, he just got to build a board and try to kill me if I don't kill him. I don't know why that's still selected. Okay. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I guess it doesn't really matter which one of these I play. Guess I'll play the big one. No volcanic arrows, please. Torque on, okay. Nice, and we dodge. <laughs> GG with the speed attacking Earth Storm Giant to take the game. Oh my goodness. That was a hilarious way to end that against Rush. All right, that was a super fun one. I'm really happy with that. Obviously, we are currently now the only 5-0 in the tournament, so we're just 100% locked for top eight in IDC 31, and that feels great, but it also feels great to uh, win two to one in what I think is one of the, definitely one of the trickiest matchups this deck could face. Ironically, Stained Glass, the card we put in this deck to tech for this matchup, we only drew when we were on the draw, and when we're on the draw, it's just too slow to make a whole lot of sense. On the play, it would have been sick, but we already had pretty decent curves. And we did it all without Aqua Surfer in shields, let it be known. Not always 100% needed, but that was an awesome match. Probably one of the most fun so far, a lot of interesting plays on both sides. And um, uh, yeah, excited to see how we do in round six. The pressure is off, which feels great. Win or lose, we're in top eight. We're still going to try to win though. So yeah, stay tuned and I'll catch you in the next one.